So hi, I'm Holly. Uh, I'm an artist from Glasgow and I got involved with the archive through a placement with um, Glasgow School of Art, um, a sculpture placement. But that kind of grew into um, a relationship with the archive where Sorsha asked me to do um, a pop-up for the Grey Day event um, doing nails because um, I also uh, am a nail technician. So yeah, I started looking at um, Poor Things, the novel, and particularly the illustrations within uh, the novel and kind of just cherry picked motifs and symbols that I thought would translate well um, into nails. So maybe the, the just the practical factor, I needed something that was like able to be teeny tiny onto someone's pinky nail. I had read the book, I think, I think like 10 years ago or something when I was studying English literature um, the first time round. And yeah, I loved the book so much. And, and I've read it a few times since that time. Um, but I, th I, th I thought it was interesting to try and like pick, a pick elements throughout the book that would translate, trying to get elements that represent each part of her journey throughout because the book does follow like her transition or like her um, like enlightenment, I guess. Parts of that are really funny and parts of that are really gory. Um, and I guess like there's the whole time it's like kind of a question of morality. Like she's seeing the, wor the world through a baby's eyes, but then they, <clears throat> they like the, I don't know, the powers in the book think that she's the naive one, even though what they're doing most of the time is like completely nonsensical. Um, and it's only her in her naivety that she's able to point that out to them. So I guess it's the sets we're trying to like map that transition um, and like follow, follow her um, outlook on life into like understanding the real world, but still in this kind of magic realism kind of way. Yeah, so I, I think I picked um, Mopsy and Flopsy first, the rabbits, because I thought that they would make a nice contrast, one black, one white onto the nails. So I did that on a few. Um, one of the sets I did was like a an ombre nail with the, with the rabbits. So that was kind of um, indicative of Bella's transition throughout the book. Um, Another set I did was uh, focused on a lot of the Grey's Anatomy illustrations. Um, so particularly the teeth and the bones. Um, and I think that set I chose because the, the book is actually like the, I guess the essence of it, it would be like a, a horror, but because of Alistair's tone of voice it becomes it becomes a lot uh a lot less morbid than the actual storyline so i guess that was a nod to the actual morbidity of the text it's a uh, th those ones are bones and teeth like encased in a kind of little gilded frame so that was also a reference to kind of like the victorian adornment that's present within the text and like a lot of the framing um on the chapter headings so just taking elements from the book and, and merging them all together. Using the Grey's Anatomy um, illustrations of the bones and the teeth, I'm trying to, that's kind of like the final set that rounds everything up, that's, that's um, trying to reference Bella's like newfound autonomy, where she's decided that um, she's gonna go into medicine and she's gonna, you know, be like this active agent in her own life instead of having it dictated to her through like the circle of men that's always trying to control her. So it's like, yeah, her regaining autonomy through her career. Another one was um, 
teeth with a little 3D fleur de lis motifs. So again, kind of referencing, um, I guess that's more French, but but I guess think, just thinking about um, the kind of plushness of the period that the, the, the text is set in um, and thinking about like ornamentation and there's there's a lot of like frames around the nails, um, like little beading. So just just trying to like build up a kind of richness to each of the sets um, that references the period, the clothing um, that the characters are wearing, which you which you see at um, the beginning of each chapter heading with uh, Alistair's um, illustrations of each of the characters. So the, there's a set that um, is is actually referencing the tongue images of the Grey Anatomy, Grey's Anatomy illustrations. So um, that's all about like the kind of birthing of Bella and it's a very like red, bloody, fleshy set um, that kind of references the more gory elements of the book. Um, and again, the Grey's Anatomy teeth are in there um, and more like kind of Victorian flourishes. And then there's another set that symbolizes um, Bella's like home life. So there, there's locks of her hair kind of swirling throughout the sets. There's like gilded stars that reference the um, the kind of starry night sky that's on the front cover of the book. And then there's um, jewels in that one as well, just cause. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's, that's that's an interesting um, link is that, you know, it's it's kind of her femininity that's scoffed at a lot within the book. Um, and and is, that's the reason why she's not taken seriously a lot of the time. Like, her, I guess her na naivety and femininity is like merged into one. And then taking something like nails that, that um, you know, that like embodies femininity in the same way and then using that to tell the story of somebody who is going on that same journey it was such a fun such a fun project it was like yeah like nothing I've done before because usually I just do things that look pretty but then I kind of had to think like why am I doing this yeah.